Hi everyone, my name is Rodney Smith, and I'm with Board Game Geek, and I'm also here with Jerry Hawthorne of Plat Hat Games, and you brought a special treat with you. I say special treat because I only learned about this game just shortly before Gen Con, I think is when you announced this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this is a game that sort of falls within the line of games like Stuff Fables, right? Yes. That you it's also an, designed. Yes, and it's, an, it's an adventure book game, just like Stuff Fables. But it's not just a retheming. Would that be accurate? There's there's some other changes to the game here as well. There are. There, there are some. It's about 80% of the mechanics are about 80% the same, but um, like it's quite a bit different experience playing it. First and what, of, why is that? Yeah. Well, first of all, it's really not a game that we engineered it to be played with children. It's more of an adult experience uh, for a more mature player. Right, I remember with Stuff Fable, it's very important to you to feel that uh, kids can play with their parents and be just as equally invested in the experience as their parents. Yeah. But here, this is geared more towards an adult audience, would yeah, you say? Yeah, I mean, specifically geared towards um, uh, people who love board games and um, and story, and uh, but don't necessarily gravitate towards children's games. Okay. Um, this is a completely different kind of theme and a different kind of feeling to the game because it's not a linear story. Uh, it's, it plays and feels a whole lot different, even though many of the little mechanics are the, are the same. Can we can you tell us a little bit about the story? I suppose we don't want to spoil things. There's probably lots of things to find here, but can you get sure. to a general sense of it? Absolutely. Uh, and by the way, this is just prototype quality stuff that we're looking at here. So wow, it looks really game, good. No, thank you. <laughs> The game isn't going to be out until December, so okay. uh, I just want to make sure that people know that they're just looking at the prototypes. Right. So what we have here is uh, Komenots. It, basically, the story it, behind the game is, because all my games start with a story. Yes. The story of the game is, is that there's this, this incredible genius who has spent his life inventing a machine that, uh, that will provide power for the whole entire planet, and it's clean, renewable energy for the whole planet, and he would... We, we would enter a new era where we would no longer have to struggle for for, uh, for energy. Yeah, isn't that the dream? Yeah, yeah sure. Right. And um, but on uh, he's also had a troubled life, like many geniuses and stuff. He's got a, a unique way of envisioning the world. He's very imaginative, and as a yes. child, he was bullied by other kids, and right. um, he was sort of a loner and had some difficulty socially interacting with people. And he was always constantly consumed with this idea throughout his whole life. Uh, compelled to build this machine that would, that would save humanity. Unfortunately, on the eve of the of the inauguration, and then when they're going to turn the machine on, right. they go to activate the machine, and some malfunction happens, and he gets uh, zapped with a whole bunch of weird, dark energy, and he ends up in this odd coma. And his machine is melt is gradually melting down, and when it does all the way, it'll actually end up destroying the planet. Wow. And so, okay. That's uh, you know, the, the that world... took a dark turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the scientists come up with this uh, experimental technology to send people into his mind to try to find and interact with him and bring him out of his coma. Okay. And the way that you do that is so you're we're playing as like the people going in. You are mind. just an average Joe, and the only experience that I mean, the only qualifications you have for this job as being a coma not is that your uh, brain patterns happen to fluctuate at the same resonance as his brain patterns. So it's not my particular so, skill set I've been chosen for. That's so right. I'm not necessarily like, like really well equipped to go in here and do that's this. That's right. Like, oh, interesting. interesting. You know, okay. So, and it's just like kind of, you can sit down with any group of players and you're all sort of in the same, you know, in the same boat. You're all yeah. going into this guy's mind and it's not necessarily a safe place to go. And in order to go in there, you have to kind of sneak into his mind. So they, they, they pick out little bits of uh, images from his memory and stuff of, of characters from, uh, from fantasy and, and his imagination and also real people that he interacted with and knew in his, in his life and his memories and stuff. And you uh, take that character's form and you also take on some of that character's abilities as they would, uh, that, as they would be realized within his, the constructs of his mind. And you speak into his mind, into his memories and into his imagination and you're looking to have an interaction with his inner child, who is guiding you through kind of like a like a little rabbit hole through his mind, uh, trying to, he, the inner child is trying to communicate with you. Right. And so you're poking around inside of his mind, and um, what what it is, is you're and trying- Is that represented here, on, so on this, in the book, we see these images, right? So is this considered sure. to be inside of his mind? Yeah, here? like uh, every page is different. So you're you're inside of an adventure book, and as you move through the book, it'll tell you which page to go go to. 
and you are interacting with the environment and stuff. And this is like a construct inside of his inside of his mind. Okay, yeah. But somewhere in his mind, he's being held captive by one of his own inner demons. We call them IDs, short for inner okay. demon. Okay. Um, but these aren't like a religious thing. They're they're like a psychological thing. His own trauma that he's experienced in his life is literally holding him hostage or holding him back. It's, it's kind of symbolic of the things that we let sure. hold us back from our own fulfillment right, in life. Right. And so one of them, you don't know which one, but one of these inner demons is holding him hostage. So your goal is to try to find out where he's being held hostage, and you're trying to get there, which isn't the easiest thing in the world. And then you're trying to basically do battle or help him do battle with his own inner demons so he can be can relieved let go of, of that. Yeah, yeah, so he can let go. And, um, and they're all based upon the typical things that might hold a person back in life. Like, for instance, I laid out just a few of them here. There's 11... Uh, inner demons in the game that you can contend with, uh, but like as an example, I have here. I have, I have guilt. Here we can hold it this way, even. Yeah. Okay. I have guilt, and I have failure, and I have resentment, and I have fear. These are just an example of four of the eleven different kind of areas of his mind. But if you notice, these are all very different in theme. So they they match like things that he was interested in. For instance. Um, let's just take one of these as an example. Sure, yeah. We'll take failure as an example. Uh, so this is all based on a comic book series that he read when he was a child. But in, in, in Martin's mind, anybody who is a rival of his is, uh, is an enemy, is a, is a villain okay, in his mind. Right, right. So one of his um, biggest rivals that he contended with when he was a young college student, you know, trying to trying to get recognized uh, in, uh, among in a, in a special college that he went to for geniuses only. His biggest rival was this this guy named Gordon, right? And yes. so Gordon and a, a really good student or something. Yeah, he was, but he's also really good looking yeah, and really yeah, popular kind of and everything. Going on. And right. it always made Martin feel like a failure in life. So uh, if you if, if you happen to go to uh, this this location in his mind, you'll actually be inside of a comic book. Right, and you'll okay. become uh, you'll be characters inside of a comic book and you'll be adventuring through this comic book. And that's and how that memory is being brought to Exactly. Life that's how it's being conveyed to you. And the inner child is making this happen. And so you're trying to be delivered this message through this through gameplay, basically. So how and many different pages that are maps here do we have to play in? Well, it's a hundred and, it's a hundred and some page book, just kind of like Stuff Fables. Yes. It's a really big book. And there's uh, 11 different chromosomes in this book. And that's 11 different worlds, basically, that you can explore, each having its own uh, inner demon that sort of has dominion over that. So do you sort of play out the whole story then? No, you, you're, you're, hopping you're hopping around, and you'll, okay. every, every time you play, you'll only experience a small portion of his, uh, of his inner psyche. Right. So you're kind of hopping around. And the way you do that is when, when the inner child comes into play, he'll come into play on these uh, rabbit uh, spaces. And you'll go there and you'll interact with that inner child. And if you have a successful interaction with that inner child, you'll, be, uh, you'll have an opportunity to gain a totem. And these totems are uh, connected to the different realms within his mind. And you can use that totem to the travel to that oh, place. And it'll give you a page number on the totem that'll yes. tell you where you're gonna go. And then you go there and you're in a completely new environment and while you're there, his mind, it, it, it's starting to detect that you're meddling around in right, his mind, right. right? And so as you do that, you're gonna build up uh, to a point where it, his mind will turn against you like a white blood cell response, like an immune response. Because you're not supposed response. to be there. No, really? you're not yeah, supposed to right. be there. Oh, that's, yeah. that's really fast. So when do you expect to have this release? This is not a final production. So is this something that's being uh, It's, it's being printed later? right now. Oh, really? Um, I talked to the printers yesterday, and it's running right on time, and it should be available in, uh, in early December. Right. If all goes well. If right? all, goes, if all well. goes well. Now, remember, this is the board game industry. Right. And things so don't always things, go well. Uh, yeah, sometimes, you know. Sometimes but, you end up um, in a coma, sometimes your game gets late. So that's you right. You never know. That's right. Well, so, Jerry, that sounds like I know that you love to fill your games with rich story, that's I believe what drives you, right? That experience yeah. of story and sharing a story with people who play. And it sounds like yes. you've done it once again. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you for giving us a, a quick taste of coming out. So if you're suit, keep an eye out for it later this year. But Jerry, again, thank you. Thanks thank for you, joining man. us. All right, thanks to all of you as well. See ya.